new supply, new narcissist, really? Is that what's going on? And people ask this question a lot and they're very hurt by the fact that the narcissist does new things or changes their ways or acts a certain way around the new supply. When a narcissist meets someone, they groom. So basically the reason that they um, change is it because they're actually changing, have had a change of heart, are happy now. A lot of people are, are think, oh, he's so happy. She's so happy with the new supply. They're, the narcissist is, is finally acting happy. And it, so there's a much better, they, that's a better person than me, that it was my fault. I was the problem, blah, blah, blah. They're not actually happy. What they're happy about is that their perfect idealized state of relationship exists at this time. When they're in the beginning with anything, they are in the idealization phase of the relationship. So they appear happy and they give that person, you know, they love bomb. They're doing that to that other person. It That isn't real. That never was real. The love bombing in the beginning is part of the grooming process. What is grooming? Grooming, uh, basically it sets an image in the victim survivor, in the in the target's mind of the of the narcissist so it's setting an image that you will see them as it's a created state it's a created image that they're setting of themselves that you see them as that's why people almost every person says i wish it could be like it was in the beginning i just want to get it back to when it was good i just want it to be like that i want them to be that person why can't they be that person i saw them be that person why can't they still be that person you know it's very confusing because you think well if you're just happy then you're in a good state. Everyone in the beginning of any relationship is kind of happy, right? That's not grooming. Grooming is when they're faking, they're faking a persona. They're faking a, a whole, they're putting on a huge mask that is exactly what they want you to see in order to get you to believe that's who they are. And why do that? Because they can control you then. They control the situation. If it's all been created, then they can control what happens. They want to appear things like trustworthy. They want to appear like you. They want to appear similar. They want to appear like you have commonality or similarities. And if you don't, they want to appear like the best teacher or the most exciting person to show you new ways of doing things so that you become like them, right? So they want this commonality. We all want commonality. It's different than wanting to be around like-minded people. This is a created state. They don't actually like, you know, uh, I don't know, ice skating, but they will pretend to in order to make you think they do so that you have this similarity and these commonalities. Usually it's, or often they do find things that they kind of like, or they're kind of good at, and they go seek supply there because that's easier. That's like the lazy narcissist. You know, they can go, oh, I like, I like rock climbing. So I'm going to go find a rock climbing piece of supply. And, and, you know, that's easy because then we have these things in common where this you're never going to have everything in common with someone, but they try and pull as many things as they can to make it seem the same. And where they're not the same, they like to be completely unusual sometimes so that you're fascinated by the newness of them. Okay. They also, when they're grooming, um, they want to appear like the perfect partner or maybe not. Maybe they want to appear like the perfect um, project, right? Because they know that you are people pleasing and somewhat codependent, they may want to appear like they're broken and wounded and that they need you and you need them, right? They want, they, they build in the need through this grooming. Um, they, um, it disarms you when they do this and it stops you from looking at the red flags because what you're looking at is all this familiarity. You basically think you found a soulmate. You think you found the real deal, all right? That's what they're trying to, that's what they're setting up. And it's all done kind of on purpose. It's how they, it's how they enter into things. And when you stop looking for red flags, you know, um, and it's creating an image that you believe in. So they're creating an image that you believe is who they are. That's what they're doing when they're grooming. Okay. They will, this is straight from one's mouth. They will set up situations when they're meeting someone so that, that your first impression is that of which you want to see. They create a lens by which you look through to see them. And then once that first impression is set, they can maintain it for a while 
and you will always believe that that's who they are. Then when things change, it's your fault. You see? Okay. Okay, so when they're doing this to new supply, when they're doing this to someone new, it's the same process. What you're just seeing is it from the outside. You're seeing it from the understanding of what they really look like, of who they really are, and you're confusing their happy demeanor, appearance, with happiness. And you're confusing the new supplies, um, happiness and such, and getting and, and thinking that they're getting what you, you should have because you're the one that put in the time and the effort toward a relationship with this person and they just go give the goodness to someone else. They're not giving goodness. They are, this is the worst part of abuse to me because this is the hook. This is the hook that stays there, that's within the trauma bond cycle. When you, the thing that's hardest to let go of is this hope. This is the creation of hope in a relationship. Okay, it's the ultimate future faking. I will be what I say I am right now. That's the ultimate future faking when it's not true because they, they're not that thing, all right? So, all right. Um, so let it, let's look at some ways in which they groom the new supply so that you can see the ways that they create this changed persona, that they're not a changed person. We have to remember that, okay? Number one, they're mirroring. If you're mirroring someone, you're gonna change. We all mirror to some degree. It's part of, it's part, okay, empaths will mirror because of the empathy that we feel for someone, we actually feel it on the inside and so our whole demeanor can change because we are actually feeling the experience of that other person and it can it's a different kind of thing. A narcissist mirrors to gain information, take in that information and wear a mask to maintain a situation under their control. They wear the mask because they don't have the true self there to, I mean, they don't, well, they wouldn't, don't wanna show you, okay? All right. Another way that they groom people is they fish for information. So when you're getting to know one, they will start digging for info and fishing for info from you and then start piecing stories together often that, that match that info. Also what they're fishing for in that info is your vulnerability, are your vulnerabilities. So they're looking for things to to keep you there. They're looking for things to keep, to get you addicted to them, to hook you in so you don't, because they need supply, okay? They need someone to think that, to worship and adore them is the words, again, straight from their mouths, <laughs> right? They need that, um, they need that sort of attention. Uh, they, with that kind of fishing for info, they can read your needs like kind of like antenna out there, grabbing information, grabbing, looking for your vulnerability. So for instance, if you are a person who has had bad, bad relationships and you're a really sweet person and you don't know what, why these bad people have been in your life and people have abandoned you and you've got this total fear of abandonment and you're, you're, you're entering into something with someone that's a narcissist and, and they're, um, they're seeming really supportive of that. They're like, yeah, they get you because they've had abandonment too, or that, that must really hurt. Yeah, I know. And then they'll suddenly leave you little messages, like send you little texts out of nowhere. Like I'll never leave you. I'll always be by your side. Um, I'm right here. They'll be like so ultra supportive of that, of that vulnerability. They're grooming you to trust them. They're grooming you in to to trust that they are the answer to all these problems that you've had in your life. Is, are they a new person? No, they're not a new person. They're presenting a false self. They're presenting a false self because they're, like I said in the beginning, they're setting up a situation because that's what they want you to appear like. So maybe, you know, they aren't going to continue to do these hobbies and things with the person unless it's something that they actually like doing, but, they'll hold it for a while to give the pretense. And then what they'll eventually do is sabotage that thing. So say you are a, I don't know, a, a runner and they, they take up running with you and they're running all the time with you. And then suddenly they'll make it so you can't make it out to run before 6 p.m. when it's pouring rain or suddenly they'll start sabotaging that very thing you love. Another way of grooming is future faking. Future faking. You're hanging out for one day and you suddenly you're on a vacation somewhere and you're going to have this happen and you're going to have that happen and you've done them for a week and suddenly this is, 
you know, but these things are never going to happen. That's not planning. That's not hope and daydreaming together. It's total future faking. They future the entire setup of their putting on the fake mask to begin with of the lens that you're looking through not being real is future faking. Okay, they're saying this is me, this is who I am, and this is who I will be in the future. So the ultimate in future faking is this mask that they put on in the beginning. It's this new, this new person that they become. Okay, they also, I think, um, another reason that they change for new supply is they get bored and they it's like a new toy. So it may be a hobby, it may be a lifestyle, it may be a anything. They're having fun doing it. It's new and exciting. They play on your empathy. When they're grooming you, they are often sometimes, often sometimes, they are sometimes um, uh, playing the victim. My ex was so crazy. You don't even know how hard I tried to make it work. They were just crazy. They were always after me. My ex put me down so much. I have no, I have no self-esteem left. I just don't. They were always putting me down. My, you know, and so what are you thinking? You're thinking, wow, you seem great. You actually are perfect for me. You seem like a soulmate. I would never do that. I would never, I mean, your ex must be, that must be terrible. And so they're doing that. This is all part of the grooming. It's part of the, what is pulling you in and making you trust them. If someone exposes a vulnerability to you, do you not trust them? Right? Soon as soon as you have those deep conversations, do you not feel connection? It's what we're after, right? Connection. And a narcissist will do this and play on your empathy and pull you in. And there begins the soulmate fake out, right? They are creating this mask that for the new supply, for you, for whoever they're they're grooming, then they they're creating what the relationship looks like based on the mask that they're putting on. If the new supply is nice and kind and does everything right by the narcissist standards, what makes the narcissist devalue and find other new supply? Why don't they just stay content? Well, number one, the narcissist was never content to begin with. What they were doing is power playing. They aren't content with the relationship with the person. They're content in the manipulation of the person. And it's not even a contentment. It's a rising of, it's probably, a you know, all kinds of chemical reaction in their body that has to do with what power and control feel like. They don't have um, boredom too. Yes, boredom. So yeah, they can get bored because it's not new anymore, because it's not exciting, because there isn't a challenge. Of course, they can get bored. Even if that person could read the boredom, even if it was like the most extremely perfect supply, for that particular narcissist and person could read the person's mood and tailor their mood to fit exactly what the narcissist leave, they would still get bored because they're not content inside themselves. They're not happy inside themselves and they don't have anything real inside their own personality to anchor to. Okay. So they're just literally feeding off supply all the time. When you are feeling like the new supply is getting all the good, when you are feeling like you weren't good enough um, and they have replaced you, when you are feeling like um, like a replacement has, you know, has taken, someone has taken your place that, that you, it is not about you. It really isn't. It's about the narcissist need to constantly have something new and shiny. And here's the point. They need someone who can't see through them. The only person who can't see through them is someone new. The narcissist needs someone in their life that idolizes them, that worships them, that adores them, that has their back 100% no matter what they do, that will make excuses for them, that will accommodate them. The narcissist needs someone that will constantly be taking the accountability that they should be taking for them. Okay, so that's what they're seeking in the new supply. They're not, and, and they want the fun and the ease. They want the lack of complicated and the rush of the newness of the new supply. That's it. It's not about the other person at all. It could be anyone, literally. 
It could be anyone as long as that person meets the criteria and gets hooked and gets hooked in, you know, you just, that's it. 